Welcome, ladies and gents. Chris Andre here. You can find me at BetBoxing on Twitter for boxing-related tweets. Hit that notification button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that like button, the share button, all that wonderful stuff. Let's help the channel grow. Let's talk boxing. I will bring a video of Derek Chisora's fight and uh, Joseph Parker. We'll discuss that straight after this fight in, a, in another video. But for this particular fight, I want to talk about Sonny Edwards. I did promise that I would bring a video for that fight, pre-fight. Unfortunately, I had a bit of a mishap yesterday. If I could reach over there, I'd show you I'm... Uh, holding a crutch today, unfortunately. Um, shouldn't last too long. I'm hoping I'll be back on my feet in no time. But yeah, I wasn't able to for, well, for that reason, basically, yesterday. A bit of a mishap. Um, but I did watch the fight. I recorded it. I watched the fight. Listen, long-time subscriber, well, subscribers to the Twitter page will know that I'm a big fan of Sonny Edwards. I think he's a brilliant boxer. I think he's a brilliant analyst when he's been on BT Sport for the first time recently. I thought he did a tremendous job. And I had personally very little doubt that he'd come away with the win. Um, and he did. I felt he won the fight eight rounds to four or nine rounds to three. The scorecards were all over the place. I think one judge had him winning by just a couple of rounds. Uh, another judge had him winning by seven, I think. And another one had him winning all the rounds. Um, he definitely won by more than just a couple of rounds. Definitely. The judge that had him winning all the rounds, that's way too wide I believe but apart from one round um which I thought uh uh Mitalani and I'm sorry if I'm butchering the name if uh I thought Mitalani won clearly I think it was the ninth or the tenth the others that he won were close rounds they were swing rounds it's not the worst scorecard in the world uh I thought it was eight four nine three that sort of fight but he built up a lead so even the eight four it's an easier uh win than, than it appears on paper because really Edwards had to be stopped. There came a point where you just knew that unless he gets knocked out, he's winning this fight and he never looked in trouble. So it was quite a, a comfortable win in that regard. We'll talk about some of the stuff he did. First and foremost, I've got to give a shout out to his trainer. I believe his name is Grant Smith, who did an absolutely terrific job with the corner work. You know, early in the fight, you know, there's, there's this... um. I can't remember exactly which one it is right now, but there's a, there's a, uh, in fact, I had to remind myself of what it was called, this little story I'm going to tell you. There's a, a fish called the South American leaf fish, which mimics a dead leaf or a, de a dead tree leaf. And other fish go to it and start to nibble at it, thinking they can eat this leaf. And then it pounces and catches its prey. It plays dead to lure you in. And, Last night, early in the fight, I think it was the second round, at the end of the first or second round, Sonny Edwards' his trainer told him, you're working very, very hard, and he's making you do that. Matalani's offering you opportunities to hit him, not opportunities to get too hurt, but he's offering you opportunities to hit him in the hope that you tire yourself out. And I thought that was great corner work. It was spot on. Because early in the fight, Edwards was moving. We know he's a brilliant mover. He was moving and he was letting his hands go a lot. And you're sitting there and you're thinking, you're overworking here. Are you going to be able to maintain this for 12 rounds? Move more with your legs. Let your hands go a little bit less. You don't have to beat this guy up. You know you're not going to stop him. He's a very durable guy. Just, you know, do what's necessary. I know he's at two... I know uh, Matalani, two of his three defeats were by a knockout. But... You know, Edwards isn't a puncher. That's not who he is. Don't fall into that category. Win the fight on points. Outscore him. Outbox him. Don't hold your feet too much. Use your legs and move around the ring. Even if he's offering you openings, if he offers you five openings, land two shots and get out. You know, uh, stay out of the out of uh, the center line. Um, you know, he, he, just his advice throughout, talking about the spacing and the gaps and the distance control. Everything he said was at the right point at the right time. Um, and Sonny Edwards, listen, let's talk about some of the things he did that were really, really impressive. One of the mistakes that a lot of movers make is that they over move against a guy who's looking to hunt them. And what that means is that when you're moving around the ring and you're circling that ring, let's say you're moving on the, on the back foot and you land a couple of jabs in the right hand, you're not holding your feet. So it looks like there's nothing on those shots. There may very well be. But because you're not holding your feet and you're constantly moving back and the other guy's doing the hunting, if you land a couple of jabs and a right hand down the pipe, which isn't huge, and then as you try to turn the corner, he catches you with quite a significant left hook to the face or to the body. Doesn't hurt you, but it's an eye-catching shot. There are a lot of judges who are not going to say, oh, okay, you landed three and he landed one. They're going to look at it and they're going to say, I'm going to score that exchange to the aggressor 
who was constantly coming forward and he landed the eye-catching shot. So if that happens four times in a round, well, you've landed 12 punches, he's landed um, four punches, but because he's in the more eye-catching, a lot of the judges are going to give it to him. So one of the problems that a lot of fighters have when they're constantly moving is that they appear as though they're running and that they're not actually landing anything of note, which might not be true, but that's the perception that's given to a lot of judges. Well, what Sonny Edwards is very good at doing, one of the couple of things that he was very good at doing, is knowing when to hold his feet. He wasn't afraid to hold his feet. He was moving for 90% of the fight. But those short little exchanges where Matalani was catching up with him, he wasn't afraid to let go of his hands, to hold his feet for a couple of seconds, ripping a nice left hook to the body, launching that right hand down the pipe, then getting out. Matalani would land something, Edwards would land something in exchange, in return and then move away. So at range, it became apparent that it was all Edwards. And then up close, you're going to start to look at it and say, oh, that was a good exchange. Who won that exchange? It was tight. But he knew that he couldn't hang in the pocket with Matalani for too long. So instead, he was consistently moving around the ring, um, but knowing when to hold his feet. Additionally to that, if you're just circling the ring, for instance, you become quite predictable. And so there are patterns, and it's quite easy to cut the ring off on you. What Edwards was doing, which was brilliant, is making his movement unpredictable when Matalani was closing the range. When he'd come in close, you'd see one thing that Floyd does very, very well. As he's moving to the right, he'll take a quick step to the left and move out, or take a quick step to the left and then back to the right. It's a constant lateral movement before the escape. And it's an unpredictable lateral movement. And what he does, he'll often do it as well when he's just out of range to keep him out of range of that hook. In other words, he his spacing, his distancing, his understanding of where he was in the ring and his unpredictability in changing the movement was brilliant. The other thing he did very, very well, because he's such a good mover moving off the back foot, uh, when Matalani would get desperate and throw quite you know wide shots and try and really launch himself into shots, when he'd fall short, and he'd put his weight over his lead foot, so he was off balance. Edwards wouldn't always just move backwards. Sometimes he would, and he would, when I say sometimes, quite often, he would shift his weight quickly and throw a counter shot, a powerful shot. So as he's moving away and he's fencing and catching him with the, the jabs and right hands, when Matalani would then close the range a little bit more, but still fall short because he's getting desperate, Edwards would take a step back as he's exiting as he's rotating and moving away, and then come back in with a counter. And that would be an eye-catching shot, because he's holding his feet, it would be a significant shot. It really was a masterclass in movement and boxing to hit and not get hit. You know, I've had this conversation with people before on this channel. Fencing is often undermined. To me, it's a beautiful skill to have. Fencing is an Olympic sport for a reason. It requires distance control, balance, um, coordination it requires fantastic understanding of spacing uh, you you're essentially hitting and not getting hit and we're talking about inches okay and this is what if it was easy everybody would do it it requires balance and movement and an, and an understanding of um, and an understanding of your opponent's positional sense as well as agility it's about problem solving and chess playing at a high level very very quickly and Edwards was able to do that. And when he was willing to hold his feet, he showed an ability to fight on the inside too. And yes, in the pocket, that's not his speciality. But it shows that he was comfortable saying, okay, I'm going to roll with shots when you're going to throw big shots. Yeah, even if you catch me with a couple, I'm going to come straight back at you with some, you know, peppering hard enough shots. He did brilliantly well. And he's the, you know, the IBF uh flyweight champion now and it's it's deserving it was a superb performance obviously julio cesar martinez could be a, a fight that he's looking for in the future you've got nakatani in there as well so it's a it's a division um where he's got options um uh there's dalakian the the ukrainian artem get dalakian there's a, there's a whole bunch of guys in there and listen he's a very very talented fighter and in my opinion he's bringing a lot of uh, British eyes now into this division he's Frank Warren's only other world champion apart from Tyson Fury so I suspect he'll start to be promoted a lot more too congratulations to Sonny Edwards and his trainer Grant uh, uh, Grant um, Grant Smith had a brain fart moment there 
And let me know what you think of the fight. How far do you think he can go in this division? Can he become dominant in the division? And then if he steps up and goes to Superfly, well, we know that that is a very loaded division. Let me know what you think about Sonny Edwards. He's not a puncher. Four knockouts out of 16. Do you think that could end up affecting him? You know, just a 25% knockout ratio. Could that affect his success? Or do you think it doesn't really matter at this level? Um, yeah, chat to you soon. Thanks for watching. Take care. God bless.